Hello and welcome. My name's Ollie from V for Life, and today I'm going to help you through your veganuary. So first up, I'm going to make some mushroom and chestnut burgers. I'm also going to make some crispy sweet potato fries to accompany this. And then later, I'm also going to fry some banana blossom to get that kind of crispy um, accompaniment to a sort of vegan fish and chips. So let's get going. I've got a sweet potato here, came on my veg box this morning, I've just given it a good peel, and then a little nick in the bottom, I'm just going to make little slices downwards, about half a centimetre to a centimetre wide, and then going the other way, about the same again, so I can make nice thin french fries and then I've got a, a baking tray here just lined with a bit of parchment and I'm just gonna pop them in there my oven's on at 220 so really nice and hot I've always struggled to try and get um, crispy sweet potato fries you know like the ones you get uh, a gastro pub, but this recipe hopefully will show you how to do it. Super simple. It's just all about getting the right sizes and the right consistency of the ingredients. So, just going to make a few more fries from this sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are in season right now, they usually, they're in season from sort of March time, uh, not March, up until about March from October. And um, super nutritious, full of vitamin A and uh, vitamin C and also carotenoids, antioxidants that you can see from the wonderful colour orange. So probably do it for this tray. From one large sweet potato you'd probably make about two large baking trays. So I'm just going to put that to the side. They come in all shapes and sizes. This is the one I got from the supermarket. So I was lucky to get a large one on my veg box this morning. So into the baking tray and then I've got some corn flour. So per baking tray, about half a tablespoon of corn flour, and then a good sprinkle of sea salt, so a good pinch. And then I'm going to rub all that in, try and get every fry coated before I add tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. You could also use vegetable oil or grapeseed oil, whatever you got. So, tablespoon of the oil. And then we're going to massage that in as well. We don't want any lumps of corn flour left, but it all to sort of merge into one and get a nice even coating over the fries. And then what we want to do is space them out evenly. We don't want any on top of each other. We don't want any touching the sides. And we really want them to have enough space. So, so we don't want to, that's why I don't want to put too many into this tray. So a nice bit of space like so. And then into the oven. Top shelf. Um, about 15 centimetres from the top. And then if I was putting a second tray, about 15 centimetres from the bottom. And then after about 15 minutes, I'm going to sort them over and um, then they should be done. We'll give them a, a shake as well. So next up, 
is the mushroom and chestnut burgers. These are really delicious and a really good substitute if you're trying to cut down on meat or this is all new to you. Um, so what I have is some roasted mushrooms, chestnut mushrooms. These have gone in the oven for about 10 minutes, 180, with some thyme, um, a clove of garlic, some salt and pepper, and some olive oil, and a little bit of cumin as well. Um, so they've cooled. And now they are ready to be blended into burgers. With the rest of the ingredients. So I've right. got some cooked chestnut mush uh, chestnuts, whole chestnuts, which are really easy to get around this sort of time and Christmas time especially. Um, you might struggle other times of the year, so you could substitute this with uh, chickpeas or some other cooked pulse or even some beans, some flour beans or something like that. So 90 grams of the chestnuts. And then 150 grams of the cooked chest chestnut mushrooms with the thyme and the cumin. There we go. And then I've got some arrowroot here. So this might be an unusual ingredient to you. It's just a kind of binder. It's made from uh, starchy vegetables and um, it's really good at thickening and binding things. So just half a teaspoon of this. If you can't get this, you could use corn flour as well. I think this tends to work slightly better. So in with that. And then just a teaspoon of regular flour as well. You could substitute this with a gluten-free or a, uh, a chickpea flour or something like that as well. Another pinch of salt and a bit of pepper if you want. I've already put some pepper in the roasted mushrooms. And then into your food processor. This is just a kind of mini food processor has multiple functions so it's really useful. So just give it a little pulse. We don't want to really blend it too much, just create sort of a nice chunky mixture. stick together but it's still a little bit wet there we go we should be able to get about two pates out of this also used this recipe to make mini burgers before for events. So super versatile. Get your frying pan on, nice medium heat. And then like I said we can separate this mixture into two to make little pâtés. should come together really nicely. Like I said, it's slightly sticky, slightly wet. Um, but not too dry. Just kind of the right amount for a burger. There we go. You could also roast these as well. Today we're going to 
put them on the in the frying pan. So once your pan is nice and hot, I'm going to add a drizzle of oil again. You could use olive oil or a bit of uh, rapeseed oil I've got here, which I'm going to use. Nice and warm now. Good slug of rapeseed oil. And then into the pan with the burgers. And these should take a few minutes on each side. We just want to get a nice crispy um, side and we still want it to be moist on the inside. So those are sizzling away. I'm just going to check on the fries. So they're doing really well. If um, they start to crisp on the edge, you can move the outer ones to the, the inside. That will help to keep it a nice even browning. Okay, so while our burgers are frying, we can't really have this um, meal without ketchup. So I'm going to show you how to make a super easy raw ketchup. So no cooking involved at all. But it's full of flavour and a bit healthier than the shop bought ones, I'd say. I'm going to start with three tablespoons of tomato puree. Pinch of sea salt. And then I've got a clove of garlic. Which I'm just going to roughly chop. Good glug of maple syrup, some sweetness. You could use sugar if you wanted. I tend to think maple syrup is a little bit healthier. I think I'm just kidding myself. And then a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar to add a bit of acidity. I'm just going to flip my burgers. I can smell that they're browning nicely. And you can see. A nice crispy side. So back to the ketchup. A pinch of smoked paprika. I think it's really good flavour in this. A pinch of cumin powder. And then a pinch of mixed herbs. So just mixed dried Italian herbs. And you can put some pepper in there as well if you want. The only other thing I'm going to add is a little bit of water. So I've got about 30 millilitres of water here. And then we're just going to blitz that up in the Nutribullet. So put that to the side, in have with our chips and burger in a bit. And then burgers nicely toasted. So I'm just going to turn the heat off on that, put it to the side. While the uh, 
pan is cooling, I can just chuck in my burger bun. Just to give that a little bit of colour and a bit of crispiness as well. And I can just clear some of these things out of the way. on my burger I'm going to have some gherkin and some homemade uh, pickled red onion um, but equally good with tomato and some shredded cabbage or shredded lettuce so I've got, just got that prepped here just some shop put gherkins and some homemade pickled red onion which is so easy to do. You just boil up some uh, apple cider vinegar and some water, so they're half, half the amount. Um, and then add in some nice spices, maybe some mustard, and then bring that to the boil. Slice up your red onions nice and thin, and then just pour that over the top. Let it cool, and then that will keep in the fridge for months. thing I'm going to make is some deep fried banana blossom. So this is gaining a lot of popular, uh, popularity now. Um, you've probably seen it, you can get it in supermarkets. Um, it's basically the heart of a banana plant. So um, it looks very strange. It's like, it's like an alien creature or something. But it's basically the, the heart of a um, of your banana plant, and uh, it's get, got a lot of popularity in vegan food at the moment because it kind of substitutes meat quite well uh, in consistency, um, and it's a really versatile thing, and it's great in this recipe. So what I've done, I've drained my my can, and. Uh, Basically, squeeze out as much water as I can. You can also use tofu for this, um, but remember to squeeze out as much water as you can. Again, and I've got a batter here, which is one part plain flour and one part rice flour, with a little bit of baking powder in there and a little bit of turmeric as well, and a good pinch of salt. So I've given that a mix. I'm going to add about 375 milliliters of sparkling water. And you could also use a good sparkling lager or vegan beer. Just something with some bubbles. It just makes a nice kind of crispy, bubbly batter. But if, you're not, if you don't have anything sparkling, you can also just use regular water, tap water. It will still make a batter and it will still deep fry just fine. There we go. I think Heston Blumenthal uses vodka in his batter. A little bit more water. We want to make it kind of nice, um, not too thin but not too thick, smooth batter. So that's a little bit thick, a little bit more water. And in my pan here, I've got a litre of vegetable oil. And I'm just heating that up so I can deep fry it. Lots of people are quite scared of deep frying, but generally it's quite safe. Um, I've never had any problems. Just make sure you've got a tea towel ready just in case anything does happen. 
So there we go. We've got a nice kind of smooth dish batter. Here I've got some sushi nori, which I'm going to wrap around the uh, banana blossom and it's going to sort of give it um, a taste of the sea, a little um, saltiness. It's not for everybody, so you could totally leave this out. You could also marinate your banana blossom or tofu uh, before to give it more flavour, but make sure you sort of pat it well dry um, before you batter it. Banana blossom, a little dusting of flour. And then get a sheet, pair it up, and then using a bit of water or a bit of lemon juice or something, you can roughly stick it to your banana blossom before you submerge it into the batter and completely coat it. I'm going to check if my uh, oil is hot enough, just drop a little bit of batter in there, and if it floats to the top, and bubbles, then it's hit hot enough. So I can see that that's happened. And I'm just going to drop in my banana blossom. Same with the other piece. Let's shake off the excess. And straight into the oil. The oil should be about between about 180 to 220 hot. But like I said, you don't need to have a thermometer really. It's just when you drop a bit of batter and it floats to the top and it's ready. So get yourself one of these and just make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. It's going to cook super quick. You can see it's going nice and golden. And you can give it a little swivel round. Make sure the top is cooked as much as the bottom. nice crispy golden batter and that those two pieces have actually <laughs> stuck together in the oil but that's okay got a lovely big piece there look at that and then I'm going to serve that with the fries that's some I made earlier Don't forget the ketchup. And there you go. That is vegan fish and chips, banana blossom and chips. There's loads of recipes out there on the internet. This one works really well, so hopefully give it a go.
Okay, so let's serve up our burger. Gherkin, sliced gherkin, pickled red onion, and a good dollop of ketchup. There we go. That would also be great on a brioche bun, a vegan brioche bun. So there you have it, some really good junk food ideas, some more healthier than others um, to hopefully get you through Veganuary or help you transition to a vegan diet. So thanks for joining today. Uh, remember to check out our website vegetarianforlife.org.uk where we've got loads more recipes and I uh, hope to see you all again soon. Thanks.